Uh, hello, viewer. Y you know, I, I can see the look in your eyes. Uh, you know, one might say you, you look tired, but I don't think that's a face that desires sleep. I think yours is a face that desires death. The two are twins, you know. I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> That that's the uh, one. That's a line from the first episode of Gregory Horror Show, and that line sticks out with me. I kind of like it. There's a lot of weird lines and a lot of weird things about Gregory Horror Show in general that uh, made me interested in. And I've been re I've been watching the show on and off for years because seasons one and two, like all every season, is pretty much less than an hour because each episode's only two and a half minutes. So sometimes I would just watch a season. Well, I usually only watch season one and two now. Season 3 is okay, and Season 4 is fucking terrible. Okay. What the hell is the Gregory Horror Show? That's a good question. <laughs> Gregory Horror Show, the first two seasons are about a guest, a male in the first episode, and a female in the second... Uh, sorry, a male in the first season and a female in the second season. And they both have doubts about their lives, and in that doubt... I guess they appear in Purgatory, sort of. And in Purgatory, there is Gregory House, a hotel for lost souls. Okay. Did this air on, like, Cartoon Network, or what What was this show? I have no idea where this aired. It, it never aired in America, only in Europe and Japan. And I have no idea what network would have even showed this show. <laughs> Like you said, the episodes are two and a half minutes. Yeah, I don't... This must have aired somewhere. I will say the English dub is really good. I really like it. It's one of the best things about the show. Right this way, if you don't mind. I'll be yeah, the, the entire series is on YouTube, but the quality is very low. I must say, we don't often receive guests at this hour. I recommend season one and two. I think season one's the best. I used to think season two was the best, but after a recent rewatch to get this in my mind, I would say season one's better. Or maybe you just lost your mind. That was a joke. I'm pretty sure these scenes are the exact scenes from the episodes, by the way. Okay. Yeah, the show already looks like a PS2 game, and then I got a PS2 game, so the show was made in the perfect era. Yeah, it's pretty much perfect for a video game. And so I fell into a deep sleep and began to dream. Come on now, throw away all them worries. Forget about them. I can tell you ain't from around these parts. Hey, what's the deal, bud? Are you lost or something? Don't be embarrassed. I'm lost as to why Death has a New York accent. <laughs> what? He doesn't in the show, by the way. There's a couple voice actor changes. As far as I'm aware, most of the voice actors are the same, but Death has a different actor, or at the very least, a different accent. It's so weird that Death acts like this in this game, because in the show, he's a lot more serious. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the characters are wacky. Although, the character we're about to meet is less wacky. Quickest synopsis while I have time. Uh, someone with Japanese problems ends up in Purgatory, becomes a lost soul, goes to Gregory House, weird shit happens. Ends with him deciding that reality is not worth it. Oh. So season, I, I, I'll put a spoil, I'll put a spoiler warning before I say all that. But season one and two both have a bad ending.
Yeah, season one's about a stereotypical Japanese male who is a Japanese businessman and feels unsatisfied with life and is annoyed that he is married and has a kid. He does end up escaping the house, but after living one day back in the real world, he goes right back to Gregory House. Okay. <laughs> Season two is about a woman who was in love with a man, but she broke up with him to focus on her career. And so her ex married her best friend and she got really jealous and angry about it. And her, hers ends with the house burning down. And she's told that in order to leave, she has to burn her doubt, which is pretty much throwing herself into the fire. Oh. And then she straight up just doesn't. Yeah. She straight up just doesn't. She pretty much learns to live with her jealousy. Because I think the fires are supposed to represent her rage, and she's supposed to, like, let herself be consumed by them. But no, she doesn't. Instead... Uh, she stands there, and Gregory and someone we'll be meeting later if I get to that point, James, his grandson, th they're all burned. Don't let this art style fool you. This, These models can get creepy, especially the burnt models of Gregory and his grandson at the end. They're kind of fucked up, actually. The cat that inhabits that room is the last remnant of a family that once caused us a great deal of trouble. A most dangerous cat indeed. Season 2 ends with the women joining Gregory House, basically joining Gregory's family. Okay. Dude, the art style made me think this was like, you know, kind of a spooky show aimed at kids. But the content that you're describing does not sound like that. That's why I can't fathom who would even air this. And yeah, as Gregory's talking about, we met Neko Zombie. Neko Zombie was a cute cat, and I think their family also used to run a hotel. Until suddenly, somebody, totally not Gregory, uh, sewed his eyes, ears, and nose and mouth. Okay. He's been a nasty beast that attacks anyone who draws near a the manager of this hotel, I simply cannot allow you to have that key. That... Yeah, I'm playing this through emulation. I'm American. This game never came to America. And oh, then. this I seems, this ISO seems to have issues with the voice the acting. It's obviously not supposed to sound like that. Yeah, of course. This is where we're learning about the daily routine of the guests at Gregory House. The best way I could describe this, and possibly even the show itself, is imagine if Animal Crossing took place in hell. Okay. Because on Wikipedia, it describes this game as a survival horror game. It is. Okay. That does remind me of a topic I want to talk about, but before I do, I do want to quickly synopsize Seasons 3 and 4. Season 3 is a prequel about... Gregory being on a train and meeting a lot of the guests that would later be in Gregory Horror Show. And that one's okay. That one's a bit more focused on the comedy. Because season one and two have comedy, but it's... It's not funny, but it's not your uh, super annoying Japanese humor where it's, oh, panties and perverts. So it's not bad, but not funny. Sure. Uh, season 3 focuses more on the comedy. I can't remember how that one did in terms of comedy, but I do remember just thinking it's meh. Like, I, I don't go back to watch Season 3, but I didn't hate it. Season 4 is fucking awful because it does do the more stereotypical Japanese comedy where it's about a character we'll also meet later, and she's a woman, and she's a nurse, and ooh, she's bad at being a nurse, and that's the comedy for the entire season. Uh-huh, yeah. Neko Zombie is one of the few guests we can trust. I would say most guests of the Gregory House are pretty much neutral. They're not actively evil. I'm so hungry. But they're not 
is helpful. Yet? Neko Zombie is one of the few actually helpful characters, along with Death. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't look helpful. You think I'm scary? That's the point, I believe. Don't need your sympathy. Although Neko Zombie's kind of not helpful in season one until the end where he suddenly decides to be helpful, but in season two he's more consistent. Guests in this hotel are planning to keep you trapped here for all eternity. Yes. yes. They're not going to give up their souls that easily. I love Neko Zombie's voice actor. Love the way he speaks. You have to know their weak points if you want to get those souls back. First, you've got to scope out their weak points without them noticing. I will practice peeking. Go out into the hall and look through the keyhole. Also, I'm sure Brain's disappointed because I'm playing a Capcom survival horror game and it's not Resident Evil. <laughs> Well, this was actually, I mean, according to Wikipedia, maybe it's wrong, because the sources I look up seem to contradict each other, but it says this was developed in-house at Capcom at Production Studio 3, and Production Studio 3 is primarily known for directing, like, you know, Resident Evil Survivor, um, and, and all the different Survivor games. They directed uh, Resident Evil Zero, um, and they also directed, uh, like, the third Dino Crisis, and they helped out with, like, some of the Mega Man stuff. So, yeah, I mean, this is a team that is known for maybe not necessarily the highest quality of games, but certainly high production value games that, you know, have a lot of thought put into them, even if, for example, the Resident Evil Zero, that game's a really horribly failed experiment of a game where they're like, let's just remove the item box in Resident Evil and you just have to drop all your stuff everywhere. And it uh, made it one of the most boring games I've ever played. But the fact that they assigned them onto this licensed game of this Japanese animated show is pretty fascinating, and I can definitely see the effort that was put in to make it a unique game that reflects the show well. Yeah, like, they, they captured the art style perfectly, but like I said, it was already... Oh, like I said, it was already... It already looked like a PS2 game. <laughs> so that probably helps a lot. So we gotta find Neko Zombie's weak point. Oh, I'm dumb. We gotta find Neko Zombie's weak point because by exploiting his weakness, we could take his lost soul. Our goal is to collect the lost souls for death, deliver it to him in our dreams, and then if we collect all, uh, at least enough of them, he will help us get out of Gregory House. You see one of the options you can pick is mobile phone? He does eat the f main character in Season 1's phone. Which makes me wonder how helpful Neko Zombie is usually supposed to be. But I guess Neko Zombie is often hungry, and his hunger does control him. Now, the character you're playing as, do they actually in any way look like the protagonist of the show, like in the first season? The show takes place from the perspective of the main characters, so we never know what they look like. Oh, okay, interesting. Although sometimes it could be hard to tell when it's supposed to be a POV shot and when it's supposed to be a regular camera. Even when it's using a regular camera, you never see their body, which makes certain scenes really awkward. Hmm. Yeah, because the vibe I get off of you, Zach, is that you definitely say that the first two seasons are kind of the only thing in the show you really have to watch. But I don't also get the idea that you you have high, f like, you, you think very highly of a uh, Gregory Horror Show overall. I mean, you, you like it, but you also think that it, definitely has flaws, but you appreciate how unique it is? I would say that's what constantly draws me in, is how unique and different is it? it is. It's a bizarre horror comedy, and horror comedies tend to be bizarre, but this is an especially bizarre one in 
lots of ways. The way it's written, the characters, the way the plot, question mark, progresses. The, of course, the art style really drew me in at first. Of course, yeah. It's very early 2000s as well, this art style. Very early 3D shows kind of deal. If it wasn't for the low quality on the YouTube videos, I would say this show holds up pretty well in terms of how it looks. Sure, it's definitely an art style that you can see aging pretty well because everything is so simple by design. Kind of like cell shading. Alrighty, let's go to sleep and meet New York Death. Who has the Swedish hat. I believe it's Sweden, isn't it? Uh oh. Oh, it's you. What's up? Did you manage to pick up <laughs> No, I'm just like, oh no, death's back. Oh. Well, D death's a good guy. Brought me a lost soul already? Well, that sure was quick. Quick. So from what I can gather, because Gregory Horror Show is a lot about okay, then. looking Have between the lines, I guess, it's I guess to compare it to something maybe the young crowd can, uh, something that can appease the young crowd, I guess. It could be like Five Nights at Freddy's in a lot of ways where you have to kind of guess a lot of the plot. I wouldn't say to the same extent. Sure. But I, but yeah, I, I would assume if this was more popular, there'd be a lot of fan theories about a lot of the things that happen in the show. Not for season three and four, though. Those are, like I said, season three is very mediocre, and avoid season four. But I, I get the feeling that Death doesn't like Gregory House because Gregory, uh, we'll find out the reason why. But he's collecting lost souls, and it's pretty much Death's job to make sure lost souls get to the afterlife. But Gregory is preventing that. Yeah, I know, Catherine. This is the protagonist of season four. Uh, okay. You could probably guess what a lot of the jokes in season four are about with her by just how she looks. And the way she speaks, yes. Yeah. In seasons one and two, she is kind of creepy. Japanese people, uh, Japanese games, sorry, do love their creepy nurses, though. Yep. I do find it weird that Catherine is one of the first people we run into. I would consider her near final boss material. No. So what, she's gonna... It's gonna be like Clock Tower, she's gonna Scissor Man chase us or whatever. Not quite yet. Some hints about how to go about getting people's souls. Oh. To rush into this a little bit, uh, when they have their soul, they will run away. But when they don't have a soul, that's when they chase you. Okay. And when they catch you, they'll put you in a horror show. But didn't they take... We took Neko Zombie's soul, right? Yeah, but Neko Zombie doesn't mind. He gave it to us willingly. Okay. You can say this is also part puzzle and stealth because you have to spy on the residents, find out how to take their lost soul away from them, and then put a plan into action to get it. 
And then once you get it, you gotta really hightail it away from them. Okay. It's definitely a unique gameplay design. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. But, and I can finally get to the topic that I've had on my mind ever since wanting to choose this one. Have you ever noticed the power that IPs can have on people? I mostly bring it up because normally... I, I do think this game would be interesting, but the only reason I truly care about it, or at the very least care to play it myself instead of just watching a playthrough, is that it has the Gregory Horror Show IP. Oh, there's a little shit. This is so awesome. I normally would not play a survival horror game, even one that's more goofy looking like this. They're usually not my thing, but it has Gregor Horror Show, so I want to play and see what it's like. So I kind of wanted to talk about why that might be, and if Brandon and I can think of any other examples of games we would normally not be interested in, unless they were tied to something we already liked. The big, the first example that comes to mind, because if I don't, because I gotta bring up Sonic when it comes to Brandon, is Sonic Battle. I don't think Brandon would have ever played Sonic Battle if it wasn't a Sonic game. Oh no, not at all. Um, and I would not have a hundred percented it by beating it twice to get all of Professor Gerald Robotnik's journals about how he created Shadow, unless I actually cared about the IP and not really well, the game itself. The game itself is remarkably repetitive. Yeah, it's funny, because Alec actually started playing that recently, and he came up to me, and he asked, how in the world did I ever tolerate playing it on an original Game Boy Advance? And I just told him, I don't know. I don't know, Alec. And Neko Zombie's just thinking about food. We gotta go chase Catherine. We did get a hint as to how to stop Catherine with the earlier cutscene between James and Gregory. James is a fucking little asshole. But he's kind of a fucking little asshole in that he's an asshole to everybody. So he's absolutely horrible to the main protagonist in Season 2. But he's also horrible to his grandfather. Which kind of balances out. Oh, shit. Sure. Uh-oh. So you know, you know how I said this is part stealth? Hi, James. He's gonna follow you, and anytime you try to be stealthy, he's going to shout at all the other guests to let you, to let them know you're around. Oh, cool, great. Yeah, James, James is this fucking shit. I am happy that they don't instantly start chasing you. You have to take the soul first. Because when I see something like Clock Tower or... And this is probably a really weird comparison. Remothered and Nightcry. I could just only think about how annoying it is to try to solve puzzles while being chased by a monster. Well, Resident Evil 7 also kind of does that. But usually when you're doing the puzzle, the they do lock them in place so they can't come after you. Resident Evil 8 works the same way. Okay, looks like James got bored of me. I gotta find the trash can. Because I gotta pull an old classic trick. Oh! You to Man, so this is... This is... <laughs> this game is like ambition. It is like... Okay, so we're going to make the, the hotel from that show, but we're also going to have all the guests work on their own Majora's Mask day and night schedule system. Yeah, I think it makes this game really cool. I, I really like games where NPCs have schedules. Where in the world is this trash can? I mean, I wouldn't have played the whole way through Deadly Premonition if that game wasn't that game, like its personality. Uh, honestly, the combat is very repetitive, and those sequences where you're fighting monsters go on for a very long time. 
But to be fair, you know, that's not even necessarily a case where it's an IP I recognize. That's a game that was wholly unique unto itself. Oh yeah, Deadly Premonition is a is a wonderful game, but I would not have played Deadly Premonition 2 if it was not Deadly Premonition 2, and Deadly Premonition 2 is really bad. But I, I guess that one doesn't count because it's a deadly it's an actual like Deadly Premonition game. Because I thought about bringing up Sonic Forces originally. But I'm like, eh, but that's actually a Sonic game, though. It's not a Sonic game pretending to be something else. Right. Yeah, it plays exactly like what it is. Because that's the thing, right? A lot of the interest in IP-based games can sometimes be on how much the identity of the game is the IP itself. Like, in terms of, like, the actual design where you can't really separate the two. To be like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't play this if it was this type of game. I think this game captures the IP perfectly, and... Not that I can say because I haven't seen the whole game, because I've, I've only seen a little bit of a playthrough of the beginning... And I decided not to watch the whole thing. Oh, God damn it, James. I decided not to watch the whole thing because I wanted to play through it myself. Because I think uh, this captures the feel of the show completely. Where the fuck is this trash can? <laughs> oh, I'm, I, okay. I know where it is. It's in the kitchen. Yeah, hopefully we don't run into the chef later. Or we probably won't be running into the chef this episode. But the, the chef is one of the scariest characters for me, personally. Because the chef is all about... The chef is all about making you eat gross food that, as you might already be able to guess, the, the food is made out of previous guests who said they didn't like his cooking. Oh, cool. Ugh. In season one, uh, your the main the character is introduced to this red soup that's boiling hot, like it's bubbling. And the red color is unappealing. And Gregory asks you if you're going to eat it, and then the chef walks up and with a big-ass knife and pretty much goes, yeah, if you are if you don't eat that, you're going to be the next soup. Ugh. The guest starts eating the soup, and Gregory talks about the previous guest who used to have your room and how they had a gold filling. And then the character scoops up some soup onto the spoon, goes to drink it, uh, goes to eat it, and then realizes there's something solid in his mouth, spits it out, and it's the gold filling. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Spooky stuff. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't say anything about Gregory Horror Show is exceptionally scary. Oh, that's how we use that. I wouldn't say any of it is extremely scary but some of it does like some like that does creep me out because i get really weird around food i mean i understand why it, it may have come out in like this game may have come out like europe maybe but i can definitely see why it was kind of shaky how this game got not even just the game but the show itself got released outside of japan because look at this art style and then look at the content of this game and it it's probably pretty confusing that for you know, localizers to be like, well, how the hell do we market this to an American audience? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is she not walking down this hallway? Damn it, Catherine. Oh, she's in our room. Um, I would not have played through all of the Legacy of Kane and Soul Reaver games if they did not have the IP of those games and the fantastic writing and story that comes with it. Because the actual playing of those games is... Well, okay, I do like the gameplay in the first Legacy of Kane, the, the Blood Omen. That, that's a good game. Um, the, the second Blood Omen's not too bad either. But for the most part, they are uh, unfortunately not great games to play. Uh, would you count Final Fantasy 14? 
Because I don't I don't think you're a very big MMO person, but you played a ton of Final Fantasy XIV. Well, in terms of how people that actually play that game play it, I played very little, but in terms of the amount of time I usually put into a Japanese RPG, I put 160 hours into Final Fantasy XIV, and I loved that game's story. But with Final Fantasy, it's interesting because every single game is its own distinct thing. Like, yes, they'll have the same, you know, species of creatures and some of the same musical themes and races, but it's always very much a different tone in a different world. Um, so Final Fantasy is tricky because, yeah, I'll be pulled in by the name ultimately, but I, I mean, yeah, you, but you do have a point, Zach, that as an MMO, I usually would not play something like that unless I was pulled in by hearing the stories like really good or whatever. I was recently playing the game um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds, which is, takes place during Buffy Season 5. And that game, as I played more and more and more of it, I soon realized that it just is never going to change and it's going to be the same game throughout all of its gameplay and the checkpoints are always going to be terrible if you die. And I realized that despite the d decent amount of effort put into the personality of reflecting the characters in the show, I would not be getting as far as I am in it if I didn't already have a lot of affection for the source material and the execution of how they got all the show's voice actors and everything. Because as a game, it's, it's alright. Um, th some of the environments are very well executed. Uh, like, visually, there's a lot of variety um, to the locations. But I feel like the combat just felt a lot better. And while it was a tougher game, I do overall think the first Buffy game was just better designed in terms of the combat just feeling more satisfying and being more balanced. Whereas everything is more simplified in uh, Chaos Bleeds because you're playing as multiple different characters who unfortunately all play mostly the same besides maybe two exceptions. And despite the fact that, oh, you, I mean, you are going into cool, interesting locations throughout all the seasons of the show, and that's cool and everything, but the gameplay does get more and more repetitive as you get deeper in, because it does stay pretty much the same. It's explore, fight, fight enemies that spawn forever, um, and, and, and never stop spawning. So you pretty much just have to pick your battles and keep moving, and hope you get, like, some health items at some point. And then, you know, find this item, put this item here, pull this switch. Oh, the power went out. Gotta turn the power back on. J like the typical video game stuff. on the warpath if she gets you I would not have played a game like Mario plus Rabbids if the IP if the strange IP crossover hadn't been so intriguing to me Okay yeah that's a perfect one for me Like I enjoy like I enjoyed the what little I played of the demo of the original uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown but I don't know if I'd be able to stay with a game like that Yeah, I love the XCOM games, the classic and the modern remake, but they can be really frustrating games that'll test your pace and patience. Yeah. Like, e even I haven't gotten far in those games. Like, I try, but I'm Simple. I'm bad, but I try, man. Oh, one last thing. Yes. Yes. Found here, the power of your beliefs is everything. Your mental gauge, the strength of your mind, drops to zero. You will never be able to escape from this place. Oh, that? I saved the worst for last? Yes. Sorry about that. But... Ah, that's right. I forgot the mental gauge 
your health decreases as you just walk around the hotel. Oh, great. So there's like an ongoing time limit. It really is Majora's Mask. <laughs> but like, he, like Neko Zombie is describing here, if we're carrying a soul, it'll either decrease slower or maybe even not at all. Okay. So you may not want to hand in souls immediately to death, but if you don't hand them in to death, then the person you stole the soul from could steal it back from you, and then you gotta go through the effort of getting it back again. So it's a sort of risk and reward type thing. Am I telling you all this? I'm just worried about you. That's all. I probably wouldn't have clung to... I probably wouldn't have clung to uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom and SpongeBob the Cosmic Shake if I hadn't already had a... I mean, I love 3D platformers, and maybe I would get to them eventually if they didn't have an IP connected to them, but having the IP of SpongeBob does make something appealing to me. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I usually prefer 2D platformers. I would say the only 3D platform I really like is Crash. I'm not the biggest fan of collectathons, but I will say... I, I tried out Bikini Bottom because of Spongebob, and I will also admit that, yeah, I really like Battle for Bikini Bottom. It's an easier collect-a-thon, but that's kind of what I like about it, to be honest. I like the fact that the missions of Battle for Bikini Bottom uh, don't hurt me. to pick up any souls? Uh... Oh, you only brought me one, huh? Look, it was the only one available. I take it? Yeah, I'll, ha I'll hand it over. Hey, thanks a lot. Here, I'll stamp your card for you. Your card... So, we will almost be done. It is unfortunately we're going over the time that I had wanted, as usual. <laughs> but I do at least want to introduce this character, because it's my favorite guest of Gregory Horror Show. Okay. And I also want to go on a little bit of a ramble about how he's portrayed in the game versus how he is in the show. Better start getting ready to receive the new guest. <laughs> You're filled with determination. Oh, Judgment Boy. What do they do to you? That's not how his song goes! What? You're... Hmm. Now that I look at you more closely, I see you've got an awful lot on your mind. Your mi Whoever wants my help, just bring a symbol of your problem. Problem. I'll give you one of my special judgments. Judge... Yeah, we won't be getting his soul, but I at least want to talk about Judgment Boy before we stop. Uh, Judgment Boy is a boy of judgment. He In the show, he would appear randomly and give and ask the character a question. And the question would usually be between heart and money. Basically, uh, love and a selfish need. Okay. In the show, he has a deeper voice, and his song, I think, is catchier in the show. Do you know who I am? They call me Judgment Boy. He's another neutral character. He just walks up to people, asks them a question, and then you have to make a snap judgment. Uh, yeah, you have to make a snap judgment, and then uh, he'll judge whether or not you actually mean your answer. I think it might be different, but what I always got out of it 
is he would ask you to pick an example from the show. Your girlfriend's in the hospital, but if you leave, you'll lose your promotion. Do you go see your girlfriend in the hospital, or do you stay for the promotion? And the, and the male, of course, picks, oh, I'll go see my girlfriend in the hospital. And Judgment Boy does his thing, and then he goes, no, you stay and get the promotion. So I don't know if that's a choice the character made in their life before. Well, it, it can't be a choice they made in their life, now that I think about it, because the girlfriend's still alive in the real world when he escapes and then decides to go back. Ah, oh, fucking goddamn it, James. So, so what, what does that mean? It means that when they go back to the, the real world, if they do escape the hotel, that means that they will make that choice no matter what, because Judgment Boy has declared it? Oh, no, that's not it. It's... I don't exactly know how to put it. I really don't know how to put it, because in the show, there is... He meets Golden Judgment Boy, because there's multiple Judgment Boys. There's basically a factory. Okay. Golden Judgment Boy asks him if he wants to leave, and the main character says yes, and this time, uh, the heart is the one that wins. And Golden Judgment Boy says, oh, good job, you finally made your own decision. Which makes it sound like the Judgment Boys previously were uh, forcing him to take those earlier selfish choices. Okay. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but yeah, it's, it's mostly... I guess from... Oh, shit, 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 shit. Hi, James, please distract her for me. I don't know if he can actually do that, but that would be funny. Can she come in here? I don't think she can. <laughs> I think this is a safe point. Well, it's still playing the scary music. Yeah, we should sleep now. But yeah, I don't know what to make of Judgment Boy. He is my favorite character. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> but I, I don't know what his choices are really supposed to be. I think they're supposed to be snap judges of character, and that's what I like about it. The idea of, quick, you have five seconds to make a choice. And then, uh, oh, there he is. Judgment Boy, wait. Judgment Boy! Why is there no run button? Judgment Boy, please. I'm slow. So like a lot of things involving Gregory Horror Show, you can't give me a fully 100% straight answer because a lot of the purpose of the show is a little interpretive. Yeah, that's a good way to put that. Because I used to think of Judgment Boy as one way, but after rewatching the show, I'm not sure if my original interpretation sticks. I think about it more now, and I think it's less about he'll judge your actual character and more just he'll make up something. Oh shit, shit, shit. He'll make up something, and then if you can't, like, if you can't stand up for yourself, then it shows you're weak. Something like that. That's just only my guess. Okay, yeah. But I'm definitely understanding the horror aspect of this game now, that the more people we take the souls from, the more people that will be around the hotel to stalk us. Yes, basically. But as long as we learn their schedules, we can get a... Oh. As long as we learn their schedules, we can get around them. Oh, Gregory is in there. Oh, what a day. No! You're getting Resident Evil green herbs. Damn it, Gregory. 
So do you want to stop now, or do you want to try to get Judgment Boy first? Uh, we could stop here. I mostly just wanted to kind of ramble about Judgment Boy, because, yeah, he's... He's a character I like a lot, even if uh, I can't come up with a new interpretation for my brain, but I just I just think he's fun. <laughs> the Just how he pops up, asks you a question, and then uh, gives you a story based on your answer, and based on whether or not he believes your answer. Sure. But yeah, this has been a showing of the Gregory Horror Show game, which... I haven't done the best job of showing it, because I'm not very good at survival horror games, especially of this nature. But it's based off of a show that I like, and I do recommend watching Gregory Horror Show if you've got, like, 50 minutes to kill if you want. Or, like, you could just watch one or a couple at a time. Like I said, each of the episodes are very short, and I think this is a very interesting game, which, I mean, they didn't... Capcom didn't have to go so ambitious with a random... <laughs> with a random game based on a random show... That who even knows if how many people knew this existed. I don't even know if this was popular for the time or not. Must have been at least it must have done at least decently well if it got four seasons. The creator was talking about the possibility of having a re... not I don't know about a reboot, but a continuation of the show in 2016. But, unfortunately, nothing has seemed to have come of that. That's a shame, because I think a reboot would be pretty cool. I like keeping BZ as a series because it allows us to just show off a little bit of the game, and then if the audience wants to play more of it, they can. Or if you just want to look up a playthrough of this game, uh, we bring him a lot of, up a lot. But SGF also did a playthrough of this game, which is actually how I found out this game existed. Because I knew about the show for years, but I didn't know there was a video game until much later. Ah. Okay. So yeah, that, that was just a random thing to suddenly drop into my subscription box. <laughs> yep. Trying out Gregory Horsher for an hour, and I was like, what? <laughs> There's a video game? Yeah, we're going on 50 minutes. I should finally actually sign off. <laughs> so uh, I've been Zach. I've been Brandon. And uh, I'd go to sleep.